Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network. Brought to you by GoDaddy. Put your website to work while you play. Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. Another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. This is episode 126. I am Celeste, and as always, I'm joined by the lovely Alona. Hello, Celeste, who is robotic to me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're so very roboty. I'm. I'm hoping I can pick up up on all your inflection and general awesomeness. I hope that works out. You know, <laughs> new house, new internet. It's a. Uh, it's a journey. I'll say that at least. It is a journey. At least that's what I think you said. Yes, that is exactly what Yay! I said. <laughs> Celestotron. <laughs> Out to save the world. <laughs> from day-old Halloween candy sales. Mm, no one needs saved from Halloween candy sales. <laughs> exactly. I basically just don't have to do anything, so that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> So, last week's episode, super awesome. Yes, thank you to Hunter. Yes, thank you. did a great job. Super happy with it. So, good yes. stuff. I'm pumping my fists up in the air back and forth in, in celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alona. Well, I know what you did last week because I edited the show, but what did you do this week? This week, I once again bitter malted a fair bit, and I just thought I'd mention what bitter malting is if people haven't heard that from previous. We have a guildie who made a character named a Honey Bitter Malt, and she meant it for, you know, like a festive brew type name. And she took a month off for NaNoWriMo. In the time she was gone, we all got together and made bitter malt characters with all like cutesy nicknames like baby and sweet and darling and Mm -hmm. so we have this whole clan of bitter malts papa bitter malt was a rolling stone but anyway so baby my bitter malt is getting close to 80 oh my goodness yes getting close and so i'm pretty excited about that she's my elemental list (laughs) (laughs) my bitter malt is still level 30 so rock on Well, you need to get on that, dude. I just haven't been in the flavor of wanting to play Warrior. Uh, Well, I can see that. It took me a little bit to get into Warrior, actually. So I also started the Blood and Madness story with you and Saint from our guild. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Um, I still haven't gotten any further from that. So if you haven't gotten any further, we can continue on. (laughs) We're still in the same spot. Yes, we can. We're just going to have to do it like... (laughs) Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm look, looking at wrist. Exactly. <laughs> like I'm wearing a watch. I got my monthly a couple days ago. Um, and I can overachieve on my jumping puzzles because I dinged it without doing the jumping puzzles. And I'm four away from getting those done. So oh, okay, that should be pretty easy to finish up. Oh, yeah. On Monday night, I did Guild Missions with Maven, which is another guild I'm in. And I'm pretty sure we ran some fungions, at least one. Pretty sure. Not quite, but I'm pretty I, sure I did it. I believe I did. <laughs> and I did yet more Mad King Labyrinth. I taxied in. I got a taxi in. I actually used the looking for group tool, which I almost never use, quite frankly. I've If I don't have guildies on, I tend to just tootle around and do 
like crafting or or kind of maintenancey things that right. I don't want to drag other people along for. But I decided that that's what I would do. And my terrible, terrible luck with the foil wrappers mm-hmm. was not in effect. Excellent. I got about a hundred ish bags, trick or treat bags, and I got seven of the foil wrappers out wow. of them. So I opened like 200 and some and got one. And then I opened a hundred in a bit and got seven. <laughs> I'm like, random. <laughs> wow. So out of 300, you got eight, roughly? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's about the right number. I may have been higher the first time, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. But that's, I think that's all I did. I'll probably remember randomly through the show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. While you were talking, I was like, oh, yeah, I did that, too. Like, I had completely forgotten that on Friday, I think, is when we played together. Yep. We did Blood and Madness, and I totally forgot. I haven't worked on it since, so we can totally team up for that. Yeah. I'm so close to getting my monthly done. Yay. You gotta do it. Because on on Friday, I only had one of four. So over the weekend... (laughs) I managed to get to three of four. So I only need to kill about seven or eight more people in War vs. World. So you tweeted out earlier, I have, I only have to kill 15 more people for my monthly. And I'm like, context. Yeah. Context. <laughs> I, it's like the police show up at Celeste's door, arrest her, start digging in her backyard. I thought about deleting it and like putting the hashtag of Guild Wars 2 on the end. And I was like, "Mm, nah. 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 This will keep people off my back. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. I went into the labyrinth quite a bit with my engineer, and I got her up to level 80. So now I have five level 80s. Crazy. So what you're saying is I should take baby banner malt into the labyrinth. Last year, that's what I did with my mesmer. I went from like, gosh, probably about the same number of levels from about 60 to 75-ish on my Mesmer. Mm -hmm. Really fast in the Labyrinth, because you're doing so many events that you just ding up and ding up and ding up. I went from 74 to 80 in probably an hour, hour and a half. Ooh, and I'm like 77, I think, so. You would ding super fast. Hmm, interesting. From the few trick-or-treat bags that I did actually open, I don't know why, but I'm kind of hoarding them. I haven't decided to open them yet for some reason. I'm, I'm making Y hands. I don't why? know. I think last year you had to have trick-or-treat bags to make some of the recipes. Uh, I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't know. Chat room will probably know. I don't know. I don't remember, but I think that's I had decided to hold on to them. Okay. But I've got like maybe 200 now to open. Okay. Now I'm up to 101% magic find, which I know is low, okay, but it's like 101%. Actually, I ticked over to 130. After you get past 100, it goes pretty slow. Well, except the trick-or-treat bags make it go by pretty fast. You can get luck essences from the bags this year, so... Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I put on here a side note that when I was going through LA, I found McLean the Minstrel. Oh, and he was singing the the song about the magic door, and it was funny to me. I think it was really cute, and I'm sure somebody decided to throw that in there where McLean is just wandering around singing about the magic door and to be afraid of the scary magic door. <laughs> that was really cute. So good job, guys. I actually went looking for that on uh, SoundCloud, and it's not on SoundCloud. No, of course not. They haven't been putting anything from season two <laughs> on SoundCloud. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Lemon Noodle in the chat room is saying the goal is to keep your magic fine percentage up with the show number. Oy. So you only have 25 to go, Celeste. And I get to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> but the game wasn't even out for like the first 30 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> with that, I'm actually ahead of the game. <laughs> well... Yeah. Actually, 100 is really good. 101, even. Yeah. I was happy with myself. I knew it was piddly, but I was happy. You should be happy. I know that there's more things that I did that I do not remember. But, yeah. Eh. I I wrote down what I wrote down. So. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sticking by it. 
I don't remember everything I did. I'm sorry. So let's talk about when we live stream. We live stream on Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. EST, 6.30 p.m. PST at twitch.tv slash Reporter. You can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast at iTunes. Remember to rate and review Guild Wars Reporter because that's how people know that we are awesome from reviews. Report from Lion's Arch. So there was a crazy points of interest episode with Colin Johansson and Ruby Bear where they sat down and they were talking about basically like what's going to be happening further along into season two. Like I know you guys had talked about the blog post point of no return, right? Yes. And how everything has been moving towards this crazy conflagration of everything coinciding and i think that's kind of like the narrative behind what they're saying is everything's going to come together and it's going to be awesome in which case yeah of course that's always the goal but they really have listened to a lot of the feedback as far as with the story what scarlet saw and all Mm -hmm. the feedback that they had gotten regarding why wasn't this in game including from people like you and i we've talked about that on the show before yeah Because of all of that feedback, they've decided that season two has to be much more cinematic and much more immersive in the experience for players and getting them into the story. And I think they're really getting close to that Mm -hmm. with the way that uh, season two has been presented. They've moved towards a, a lot of different descriptors as far as characters and trying to explain their motivations or at least show that a lot of these characters are not just one hit wonders that they are evolving with the story yeah and i think the uh interactions between anise and kanak and the way they (laughs) reacted to them on the live stream (laughs) may be a little bit of towing the line as far as giving away some spoilers there (laughs) i we Cal and I were watching it, and we went, what was that? And we <laughs> pushed it back, played it. Again. Like, we did instant replay on that one because we thought it was so funny. Just like, it was even more awkward than Herotron. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. I loved it because it was like, yes, tell us more. <laughs> I can't possibly imagine what could possibly be more important about her age. <laughs> Olivia. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> they went on to describe some of the other ways that relationships are being altered, like for the way that Taimi has not necessarily thrown a wrench in the relationship between Rox and Bram, but it does seem like it's changed their dynamic in the way that they interact with each other quite a bit. Mm hmm. The comment was thrown out that there's a lot of potential for some really interesting story as far as the group dynamic between just those three, even, as opposed to the group of five that we currently have with the Biconics. And I am super excited to see what happens between them all because I think that there's so much potential for really great storytelling. Yeah, they have Marjorie and and Casimir as kind of a unit, and then they had... Rox and Brom, you know, being buddies, and then Timey. But it, and Timey's even like, I would say Brom and Casimir have bonded more to Timey. Yes. Well, okay. Marjorie has other things on her plate, but I don't think she cares necessarily either way. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> she doesn't necessarily strike me as a kid person. <laughs> Not so much, no. Yeah. So anyway. Ruby brought up the transition via hologram from Ciara to Scarlet and how that had been creepy. And I don't remember that specifically, so I feel bad. Really? Oh, no, it was amazing. I remember the voice acting changing. I don't remember, like, the hologram changing or anything like that. Well, I think that's just what she means. Oh, okay. Well, I don't remember if there was a physical change, but it was just that you, you could hear the exact moment. Like, one, she was one person. Like, she was Ciara. Then she was Scarlet. Yeah, that flipped switch is what was really jarring and creepy and awesome. Yeah, and that that was that was put in there specifically to 
uh, harken back to the What Scarlet Saw mm-hmm. short story so that bring elements of that into the game. Right. So I thought that was cool. And I thought it was very effective, too. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. It really helped to highlight the change and how dramatic it had been for Ciara as a person. Although I was surprised there were a fair number of people who missed clicking on that, apparently. So. Yeah, but it's in the replay. You can. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Go do it. It's yes. cool. And honestly, I'm thinking about replaying if I have time the other <laughs> episodes. Uh, I may actually wait on doing episode five before I. No, you won't. Don't do it. <laughs> no, I won't. I know. <laughs> I might do it on an alt and then do episode five on my main. They also brought up the point that is, you know, really impactful, really, because this is the first time that we'll be physically around as a player when the Elder Dragon awakens. I mean, we kind of saw Primordus kind of wake up, start to stir a bit more at the end of Eye in the North, but it wasn't really like a full awakening when that had happened. Yeah. Yeah, it was just stirring. Exactly. Every other instance had happened in between Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2, and I think Colin explained how big this is, you know, the way that he explained it on the episode, so I'm going to go ahead and play that for y'all right now. I mean, from, from a story perspective, it's, it's nuts to think about, you know, Eye of the North ended on, you got that moment of seeing the first dragon awaken, and you oh see Primordus, uh, and, we later, and we later get to experience the stories of what each of them awakening did. You know, Zaitan raised an entire continent and caused destruction all across the world. Krakatoric oh, flew across and created the, the brand and found and killed Glint. Um, Jormag, you know, did massive destruction across the northern Shiver Peaks, drove the Coden from their home, killed the Norn, and drove them south. Um, you know, the, the depths that each of these dragons and their awakening uh, has changed the world of Tyria is just phenomenal. Uh, and most of that happened between the end of Guild Wars 1 and the start of Guild Wars 2. Uh, and this is really our chance to be there on the front lines as a dragon awakens. Uh, and, you know, the, the people of Tyria realize how big of a deal that is, and they want to go in and stop it before it's too late, before that catastrophic destruction happens. And I think we've seen um, just the very beginnings of that, you know, the tendrils reaching out in the world and the waypoints. That was, that was kind of a first step into what Modramoth might do. Uh, and awesome that we were able to, to slow that down and, and slow the speed of his, his um, growth out in the world. Um, but it's going to be really fun to explore that story as we go forward of, you know, what is it like as a dragon awakens? What does it mean for the world? Can we get there and deal with him before his catastrophic, you know, his nukes go off, so to speak, on the world? Oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly the best way that I can describe. Like, all of the dragons awoke in between the two games, and we've not really been privy to a first-person perspective on that. No, unless... I was going to... And you, when you said as a player, that's absolutely right. But if you've read any of the books... Oh, yes, yes. There are it, accounts there. Yeah, and it, it because you're reading it, it feels like a first-hand yeah. experience. But yeah, as a player, absolutely, this is the first time that we get to experience and try to counteract yes. the, the initial, even though it's our own fault that Mortar Moth is as strong as it is, mm-hmm. I believe. <laughs> something else that Ruby had brought up was Ogden's benediction, which is something that you go through at the end of Eye of the North. And um, in the trailer, which we'll get into further, you get to see Ogden's stone healer. And uh, we'll kind of sort of explain a little bit about that. Although if you're in the Priory or if you've been to the Priory place, you've probably already knew of his existence. If you didn't, I'm sorry. It's not really that big of a spoiler. We'll kind of... I'm on the fence about whether or not that's a spoiler. I think for a two-year-old game, it probably isn't. But... Okay. Yeah, I think so. That's like saying, hey, you get to go fight Zaitan. Yeah. Ogden's Benediction and the way that you ran through that uh, cinematic and the way that you were portrayed there as your character and the heroes there... Um, it's closer to the way that we're interacting with the lore of the world from season yeah. two. Mm-hmm. A lot of the lore threads from Guild Wars 1 are being pulled forward and into the Guild Wars 2 story with the rest of the, for the rest of the season. 
Colin specifically mentions the names of the campaigns, Prophecies, Factions, and Nightfall, to drive this point home. The remaining episodes of Season 2 are some of the most interesting lore-wise of anything we've ever done. And yay! Yay! I'm chomping at the bit. I seriously am like, yay! I can't wait! can't remember which second episode I think it was when you go into behind the bookshelf. Yeah. To the second area of dry top. And there's all of like Scarlet's notes Mm -hmm. down there. Uh, I I was pretty excited when I was reading those. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There was a lot of Nightfall stuff in there, right? Where I was talking about trying to unite opposite tribes and then turn them against each other and stuff like that. And Nightfall is my jam, so I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ruby specifically suggests talking to NPCs throughout the episode so far. And uh, I, I keep meaning to go back and do that exact, but I just, there's too many other things for me to do. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. I feel like we had such a big break with the feature pack, but it was like, it never We're slowed still- down. <laughs> I still had stuff to do. There, while there wasn't necessarily a whole lot to report on, there was. I at least still had a lot to do in the game. No, oh, yeah. So, definitely. Anyway, uh, Bill Murphy's question about Kanak and if he's making a transition to being a quote unquote good character. The response was, Kanak dances in gray areas. As for South Sun, he believed in his own mind that he was doing the right things, and oftentimes that means to him he is good. He will be back, and his story will continue. Gray area characters end up being the most versatile. Yeah. That makes, you know, but Han Solo. Yep. That's for instance. For instance. So, uh, I'm I'm reserved about Kanak. I never really got into his storyline, but I do want to see what happens, how he's utilized by Anise. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most interesting portion of his character to me right now. Is who he's attached to? Yes. It would be neat if someone could like put together like a video montage of like all of Kanak's iterations. Mm-hmm. So you could see his big moments again. That would be nice. Yeah. You have your homework, Internet. Someone not me. <laughs> and someone not me. <laughs> well, at the end of the points of interest, there was a teaser image from the trailer. The trailer that we then got to see on Tuesday for episode five.
awesome. Yeah, it. I mean, it builds slow. It does, but it still builds up. Yeah, it builds. Because, like, okay, recap, recap, recap. <gasps> New stuff! <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I definitely heard Cal's comment many times on Reddit. <laughs> By Ogden's Hammer, what trailer? <laughs> Or by that guy's hammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the day this came out, I actually had come home from work because my throat was just a raw, ragged mess. Hmm. So yesterday, it was terrible. And I was like, Ogden! And it was like, ow, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen the tweet back from Gilbert Sue. was like, don't do that. <laughs> or don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> But it's much better today, so I can yell it without fear of damage. But yeah, you actually wrote uh, down this series play-by-play of the entire thing. Did you, I, I actually put my name next to this, but you actually did all the work, so... Yeah, I decided that I, I needed to go shot-by-shot shot to commemorate how awesome it was. Mm -hmm. First of all, the most wonderful thing... Is the Living World logo is rotating. Yes, wasn't that neat? I need to make a, a good jife for that. Jife. <laughs> I do. I need to make a good jife for that. Jife is a crazy pronunciation that Celeste heard of GIF or JIF. Yeah, and instead of GIF or JIF, let's just call it a jife and call it a day. Yeah, because it's the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Without any hyperbole, the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> we start open on this shot that was in the trailer for episode one of season two, where we're standing on the edge of that zone that I don't remember, Lemurthine Cliffs. And <laughs> the heroes are watching as the glowing door is moving away very slowly. And then all of a sudden... Ship goes lesplody. Kablooey. Yes. The mysteriously and... glowing doors. Or suspiciously glowing doors. Yes, and then we move along to where we see our heroes in dry top. And forward even further to where you get to see the vines start to interact with the locals in dry top. That's a, uh, that is a nice way of phrasing it. I thought it was a, a good turn of phrase there. That was very euphemistic. And then we get uh, first the husks and how the Mordrums start to emerge from the ground, I assume. We go through and we meet the minor villain of that guy that I totally don't remember. Aaron. Aaron. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to confront the Master of Peace who says, you know, my mission's not done yet, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Well, we get a better view of him to where he's got this orb backpack thing with an S on it. And people are I like, never saw the S. Well, it kind what? of looks like an S or a lightning bolt or something like that, doesn't it? Okay. I could Lightning bolt, I thought. Maybe okay. he's a big Slayer fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I'm yeah. sure of it. <laughs> yes, that the backpack is very suspiciously shaped. I described it as back piece slash backpack slash egg slash orb. Yeah. And moving on, we see the words, its influence is spreading. So then it starts moving towards the rest of the episodes to where we have the tendrils moving forward and sapping magic from the waypoint system. The modrum are honing in on the leyline hub and the machine there. And that's where we get the big confrontation with Timey and having to protect that terrible terrible Azura that I've also forgotten his name I'm sorry I'm Flunt terrible. Flunt yes that's right Punt <laughs> that's how I remember it in which Celeste forgets everyone's name <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> apparently this is my superpower today <laughs> it then very quickly transitions into the vision that we see while we're in the device showing the colored orbs and their place in the alchemy and the overwhelming influence of Mordramoth coming to fruition. Again, which is totally our fault. 
the minor story is that leaders are being tested because Ritlock drops into the mist after Sahothan. And then the mini dragon attacks the pale tree while the summit is happening <laughs> to, well, all of the world leaders and ourselves. So, of course, the dragon is going to come after us there. I like that you call it mini dragon. Mini dragon. Mini me. <laughs> the next section is secrets are being revealed. And you get to see the vision of the pale tree showing a dragon descending in the pursuit of a golden crystallized orb egg thing into a crystallized area. And then the vines come in to encroach on that territory. Mm-hmm. Um, it goes further on to a hero's path is paved with points of no return. And then you get to see, this is all where the new stuff starts, really. New stuff. And uh, we get to where we see, actually, the packed flags or banners, which I had to, like, find that out online. I had no idea that was the packed symbol. I guessed that's what it was. I was just like, I wonder what that is. I bet it's the packed. And it's great. I love the packed symbol. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. It's definitely different from the rest of them. Mm Mm-hmm. And this appears to be a base that's somewhere in the Dry Top region because of the overall environment. I think it's north of Dry Top. Possibly, yeah. I think it's a new zone north of Dry Top. It's entirely possible, especially if we're heading towards where I'm thinking we're heading towards. I think we've seen all there is of Dry Top because of the sandstorm mechanic. Right. So now it's time for a new zone. Yeah, that's just my thought on it. But anyway, continue. That works. Um, there's also new architectural ruins in the Maguma Wastes with more drums to fight. And when you look at these little vignettes, you see mm-hmm. that there's the potential for PvP siege, or I'm sorry, world versus world siege in these PvE fights. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like there's that area... At Fort Selma, that you can go up and you can get into the arrow carts and fire on things. Like, there are areas around Tyria that have them now. That's true. Or, like, when you're fighting the Shatterer. Yeah, the the stationary mortars and stuff like that. That could also be it, yeah. Now, not specifically, like, that was an arrow cart, which is very specific. Well, there also was what looked like a burning oil cauldron or could have been yeah but that's right those are very world versus world weapons true which which haven't been in in pve where it's like there were things there were i guess environmental type weapons that you could sit in and do stuff with but that were similar but not exactly the same yeah there also were new mordrum or not necessarily mordrum monsters going deeper into the maguma waste and there was a ton of airships from the pact there were airships everywhere. The one of the close-up of the ship banking, that's a great shot. It is. They did it's a just... wonderful job with the cinematography of this. Yeah. And then, like, we went back and watched it. Like, I actually missed the the shots being fired from mm-hmm. the hull of the ship. And it was like, Cal said, no, there were... He goes, there's shots coming from the hull of the ship. And I'm like, what? And so we had to go back again and watch that again. <laughs> it was like, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, We moved towards the... I don't want to call it a denouement because it it actually just keeps building up into the hype of it all. But Mm -hmm. season two returns and hurdles to an unforgettable end. And we see that there's the road leading up to the Priory base and a statue of a figure. The figure that was the screenshot they showed on Points of Interest. Most everyone seems to agree that it's Avedon. Who doesn't agree? I don't know. I'm just assuming that there's probably somebody out there that disagrees. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. It seems pretty obvious. (laughs) And I pan up towards the head of the statue and you see on the ceiling what exactly looks like the Eye of Janthir. Yep. Which is a deep Guild Wars 1 reference with regards to cleansing the Chosen and, well, bloodstones and sacrifice and the White Mantle. Mm-hmm. That whole storyline is so tied up in the Eye of Janthir and its symbolism that it's kind of impossible to dissect it without going really deep in lore. Mm-hmm. Then you get another uh, 
panning view of a different ceiling, this time in the Priory, and it's showing off the orbs that we saw in the machine vision. Yeah, that was uh, that is pretty awesome. It is. And, and we're going to... Do we talk about that now? Well, no, we're going to talk about it a little bit further down, but... We can yeah. talk about it right now. We can mix we it can up talk a bit. About it. Yeah. We're mixing it up? Sweet! <laughs> like, I know as soon as I saw it, I was like, wait a minute. Although, we see that pattern a lot. Yes. Even in Guild Wars 1. And I just like that there's initials now. Yeah. Initials. The letters. The letters, children. And they all line up except for there is no B for bubbles. There is S for a different name for the deep sea. So Mm -hmm. that's interesting. Interesting. And something that a lot of people haven't, I've seen it, I talked about a bit on Reddit, but I haven't heard, heard a lot of people talk about it is the, the thing going horizontally across the room. And someone, they said that was like the tail of Zaitan or something. I don't know. Are you going back to look? Someone else thought maybe it was a vine going through, but that's, I don't think it is. It looks like scale, not necessarily like plant. No. It could be bone. I heard both of those. I, I was not leaning towards the plant mm-hmm. side of things, but yeah, I thought that was interesting that not a lot has been mentioned about that. Mm-hmm. I'm not, uh, not too sure about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we start to close off the trailer with Marjorie and Ogden Stone Healer in a storehouse, presumably under slash in the Priory. Mm-hmm. And then we go through to a flash of crystal archways that look exactly like the aspect rooms from Glint Slayer. And who do we find in there in the foreground, like for a cinematic, but Marjorie and Casimir? Why aren't more people talking about that that looks exactly like the Glint Slayer? I'm actually not hearing a lot of chatter about that, which I'm like, totally. I think it's because it's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Because the, ne- the next scene is you've got um, Marjorie Casimir Ogden and a either Priory Char or a stand-in for the player character. They're in the storehouse when a sand hourglass goes super dimensional splody. With, like, Mm -hmm. purple crazy magic. And presumably, they're transferred into one of these Glint-type layer places. Like, maybe Glint had more than one layer. Oh, maybe. I actually thought the wording for right before this section, the hurdles, Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very interesting word to use. Because that means being thrown somewhere. Well, in Echoes of the Past, it kind of seems like maybe there is going to be a bit of a either time travel aspect or a place that's been frozen in time, that sort of thing. Oh, I like that idea, too. So going back to a glint layer that hasn't been seen for 250 years or hasn't been occupied for 250 years, but still has certain things like secrets from glint stored there yeah. would be pretty big it was a good there was a lot in that trailer it was almost as much in the that trailer as there were in some of the visions we've got honestly yeah there's i mean it's two minutes long but it's like there's a lot going on here guys well and most of them are like in the end yeah (laughs) at the end of it there's the crate of the ark of the covenant in the background cal saying of of the storeroom ah yes (laughs) of course so one of the things that Celeste also found on our handy dandy Reddit search mm-hmm. is there are two threads that people have created with Palo Ajoko put together a Imgur list, breaking down all the segments that uh, they thought were interesting from the trailer. And it was quite cool. And there will be a link in the show notes. And the other one is the Reddit user. Random user random user points out there are siege equipment being used in pve which we already talked about and definitely an arrow cart and potentially burning oil so if you wanted to see close-ups of those uh they call those out on a image post yeah so you can see the frame by frame and hunter saying that there are arrow carts in straits of devastation which i didn't know about Hmm. i was not aware of that either 
in the gem store are a couple of interesting new products that are probably not going to be around for too much longer. But there is the Haunted Gramophone for 600 gems. It will play 10 spooky sounds. <laughs> Do you like how I typed that? Yes. <laughs> Evil omens, <laughs> mad science experiments, ghostly haunts, horrific tr- creatures, grisly scenes, theremin riffs, pipe organs, water phones, psycho strings, haunted choir, all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Dolphy actually has video of all these. If you're interested in hearing what they sound like, we didn't include a link, but I mean, Dolphy.com. You can find it. The other item that is up is a candy corn gobbler. It's 300 gems. It uses three candy corn and gives a random buff for 15 minutes or a random transform. And duplicate buffs stack. So if you get two of the same, then it's... 30 minutes. Um, I I need each and every one of my candy corn for cobs, so Ah. I I probably won't be getting that one. (laughs) Although, I do have a candy corn node in my home instance, so... Mm. Maybe Uh. we don't need it all year. We'll see how that goes. Maybe. Uh, There was news just today about the new gem exchange UI is incoming. I think it was on a official uh, forum, but I actually found it on Delphi. Mm-hmm. The new gem exchange UI with custom option for gem and golden change will hopefully be added in the next few days before November 4th. And it includes a thread uh, post from Gail. It said, I saw the test of the new interface today and it looks solid to me. I also happen to think it's very attractive, but maybe that's just me. The interface and custom option move into testing now, and the text is already headed to localization. The dev team is keenly aware that there are Halloween items available only during a specific period, through to November 4th. And therefore, they intend to do their darndest to offer the new options in the next few days, but certainly in advance of November 4th, if humanly possible. I have confidence this will happen. So, there you go. I like that she added... You know, it's not guaranteed, but I have confidence that this will happen because (laughs) that phrase in and of itself is hugely important to the fact that, you know, we we can no longer confirm or deny anything unless it's in a public PR release speak that we've gotten. And that's awesome. Next few days, but certainly advance of November 4th, if humanly possible. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, I really, really, they really, really want it to happen. Yeah. But if it's broken, that. Yeah, if it's broken, don't put it out there, obviously, but and I'm sure that they wouldn't. But the fact that they are, you know, they're far enough along that they're saying, yeah, that works. Yay. Ha- what Actually, just out of curiosity, what did you mm-hmm. think of of the gems UI thing? Because you weren't on last week, just out of curiosity. I don't usually convert, to be honest. Not very mm-hmm. often, to say the least. When I do, I nickel and dime it down so I get the exact gem amount that I need. And it's usually just to top up? And it's usually to top up for something specific. So when I was exchanging, I would exchange for like 40 gems or 60 gems, something like that. And I don't see how having it at 400 as the minimum was possible for casual players to come in line with that. Okay. So you were in the same boat I was in, basically. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was curious. We hadn't actually talked about it. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it wasn't a huge thing for me, but I did think that it was kind of crazy. <laughs> kinda. Kinda crazy. Small K crazy. Yeah. Ask an Azura. So for this week's Ask It Azura, I kind of went towards where I've been going for a lot of the show this week. <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> User Pale Moon rightly wonders what happened to Malik, the Silvari that came from a different tree after his part in the personal storyline. And basically what's happened is that Malik has wandered off to the Maguma Waste to try and find his tree origin pod mates type thing. <laughs> And that's kind of where we're going as well. So uh, it's an interesting thought to think that that's 
where we're going to be heading, but I think it's also not within the scope. I think it's such a, a minor little thing that I doubt we're going to see it during the know. finale of season two, you know? It, it, I could see how it could play a huge part, though. It could, yeah, but I don't think that it's going to be something that that's what they're going to be revealing. I think we're going, like, full-on dragon mode. Well, yeah. We're going to be, like, running straight at Mordor Moth with scissors upraised, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. I, I know I posited in a much earlier show that perhaps this other tree while not part of the pale tree but you know how trees have roots and they connect mm-hmm. sometimes that perhaps the pale tree being the way it is or she is can affect other trees right like the which is groves that are you know completely connected miles and miles yeah. away yeah so and that is, and that is why malik bears a lot of similarities to the pale tree uh, Silvari, but not exactly. Like there are some subtle differences. So that that was my theory. But if that's the case, and if the pale tree offers protection from, if the pale tree is supposed to be a um, champion of the dragon, mm-hmm. but it isn't, I wonder if whatever is going on there is protecting the other tree as well, to a certain like a residual protection. So maybe that could be a reason why it wouldn't play into the story. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess is my roundabout way of saying that. I can see that. Yeah. But you're right, though. The comments are what <laughs> make this thread hilarious. They really are some of the best comments. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Reddit as a whole this week has been pretty on with hilarious comments. <laughs> so the previous poster had said, and Cormier... And someone had responded with, she's on an extended holiday with the rest of the gods. Basically, they quit their jobs to focus on their band and went on tour. Next comment. (laughs) They're called the Sixth Degree with a degree sign. Yep. Next comment. So deep. Yes. (laughs) Next comment. Rumor has it their next tour location is the deep. Next comment. I want to do it, but then I don't. The hell with it. Get the confirmed. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I was when I was going through it, I'm like, oh, I want to talk about this. That I saw you already had it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I kind of, I would love it if we got to see Malik before the end of this story, but I can see why we, why we might not. It would be interesting to see that storyline wrapped up because there's so few things from the personal storyline that are wrapped. Although they do go into this to explain some of the other areas that personal story. Room to grow. Well, and has come into the living world story, like mm. with the steam creatures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was really neat. And uh, now tips of the week. Do you want to go first? You go ahead. <laughs> this t- I got my tip actually comes from a listener, uh, Thundercat, who chatted with me in game. And I thought it was a really good tip. It was one I I don't know if I knew about, actually. Um, if you double-click a waypoint, you can avoid the confirmation step, so it'll just take you straight to the loading screen. Mm-hmm. I like tips that reduce the amount of mouse clicks I have to make. So if you did not know you could do that, you can. Yeah, I almost always just double-click. I always click and then hit confirm. Oh, <laughs> so. Sorry, I guess that's one of the things that I just figure people know, and that's kind of what we should be focusing on with the tips section. Right? That is why I thought that was a good tip to use. Yeah. That I did not come up with. Gosh, my tip still says nothing. (laughs) It says play the game. (laughs) Yeah, uh, play the game. You should do that. Uh, I could steal your tip from last week and say do the labyrinth as much as you possibly can. It's a great place to level. Although the labyrinth can be kind of tricky to get into right now because so many people are doing the maze bomb farming. I have actually never had an issue of finding an empty map. Wow. I wonder if people are going back to it. Every time I've gone in to play in the labyrinth, I've always been on a map where there's been one commander or at least one group that's been running really well. Hmm. So I haven't run into that problem at all. Sorry. <laughs>
tales of Tyria. Over on the official forums, uh, Chris Cleary is quickly becoming a superhero yes. of the people. Lays down some pretty, pretty epic smackdowns. Oh, they're good. So good. <laughs> they're so good. Uh, apparently someone was... Com- I actually didn't read the things prior to uh, Chris's initial post. But uh, basically, he says, thanks for getting my attention on the forums. Actually, your account was never supposed to have been unbanned. Looks like this was a slip up that I'll rectify right now. Your main account and eight other accounts have been banned or rebanned. Your other accounts were banned for botting and selling gold. And your main account was banned because you mailed gold from your bots to it. Feel free to contact customer support again if you have any questions. (laughs) And then the person replied saying, honest, I just run multi-box farming. I do not do anything bad. And then Chris says, nine accounts manually controlled. Okay, let's do some barebow math. (laughs) Yeah, barebow math. Barebow math. (laughs) And I love the fact, I mean... I get lost when people start doing numbers, to be perfectly honest. But then he posts a picture of a a grinning pet bear face. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, I just noticed he he changed his uh, signature to Evil Never Sleeps, Professor of Bearbo Math at Tyria State. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty awesome, actually. (laughs) I haven't caught that either. (laughs) I just noticed it. And then he, when he closed off the thread, he says, I'm just going to lock this thread. Um, further discussion of anything other than barebow math isn't really important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he just posted thread. yet another... Uh, Grinning bear. Bear photobomb. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to user Silvermember for uh, putting that up on Reddit. Otherwise, I would not have read it because I hadn't uh, looked at red posts yet. It made my day. I had a lot of fun with that. (laughs) Yeah. Another thing that is happening is that there's going to be a Guild Wars 2 and ESL partner on a cash prize PvP tournament. So if you want to sign up every week and win or have a shot at the prize pool of $500 US or 500 euros per region, if you manage to place and you do well for the month... You could end up with, uh, you know, a fair chunk of change. So the tournaments will be taking place every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific for Europe and 1 p.m. Pacific for North America. The first one is going to be happening on the 2nd, and it's open to everybody. So Mm -hmm. go sign up if you want to try it out and see what happens. So... And this is, I think I saw that they were also put out a general call for shoutcasters too. Was that for this? Had they? I thought I saw that somewhere. Hmm. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I saw it, but I don't know if it was somewhere reputable or not. Hmm. Okay. Well, hmm. I mean, if you want to have a chance at uh, real cash monies, then there you go. I was going to say I should go in to make other people feel better, but no. No. And again, on Reddit... <laughs> Yes. There was the thread that talks specifically about does the deep sea dragon finally have a name? And it was amazing because the consensus is that the dragon's name is Steve. Because <laughs> it starts with an S. Yes. His name is Steve. Steve the underwater dragon. Yes. And it made me think of <laughs> I immediately went to a strong bad email where he goes by the crazy cartoon and there's one character called Hey Steve. <laughs> Yes, and I have it queued up so I can share the awesomeness of Hey Steve. Oh, Oh, and at least once an episode, Hey Steve would show up to deliver his catchphrase. Hey Steve! And Bubs would definitely be the voice of the wheelchair. I'll get you, Hey Steve, if it's the last thing I do! Sorry, I had to share that whole thing. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Hey Steve. Steve! The link to that will be in the show notes. Yes. If you haven't seen that full strong bad cartoon that is one of my favorite strong bad cartoons the crazy cartoon (laughs) i we quote that one a lot i actually hadn't realized how much of that particular one we quote (laughs) but it's a lot (laughs) so yeah steve the underwater dragon and thank you reddit for existing because awesome yes 
It is pretty awesome. Over on Reddit, someone shared their amazing <laughs> doodle of Teco. Or taco. Or tequila. Or taco the sauceless. Tea kettle. Taquito the bunless. Tequila sunrise. And there was a lot of other wonderful <laughs> nicknames for Tequatl that I, like Steve, uh, the show title for this episode is now going to be Steve <laughs> Bubbles. So this works much. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. In, in the comments on this particular Reddit post was the amazing, uh, <laughs> the most interesting dragon's champion in the world. He doesn't always drink, but when he does, he drinks those techies. <laughs> So I evil cackled and snort laughed simultaneously when I saw that drawing. <laughs> and I finally got around to show it to Cal and he chuckled, but it re- he thought it was going to be a, like an actual taco with sunless wings on it, <laughs> <laughs> which also would have been pretty funny. But I just, every time I see that, <laughs> the, the little maracas. <laughs> yes. With motion lines coming off the maracas. <laughs> I love that drawing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It is really just wonderful. <laughs> so if you have a community event that you would like for us to share, send us an email. Or if you've got a burning question for our Ask an Azura segment, let us know. Indeed. And now is the time of the show where we go ahead and talk about our sponsors. If you use the coupon code MMO199, you can get your next domain or website for only $1.99 over on GoDaddy. So no matter where you are or what you're doing, people can still find you online. Mm-hmm. Or there's the Rambogo. Yes. At Doghouse Systems. Use the coupon code MMORreporter at doghousesystems.com and they will double your RAM. Super awesome. A veritable BOGO. Yes. Uh, now, if you do enjoy the show, you enjoy listening to us talk about crazy things like tacos and... Oh, uh, now I want tacos. Tacos and bubbles and uh, dwarves taquitos. and taquitos, all that wonderful stuff. <laughs> and sometimes some Guild Wars too. Um, then you should go and check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash reporter because it helps, uh, you know keep the network going and that's always a great thing to do i forgot i remembered the other thing i did this week (laughs) you always remember right before the contact info or right after i close out the show you know that right (laughs) Uh uh-huh well it's not really to do with the game necessarily but i just wanted to say that (laughs) i i I logged into mmo reporters twitch stream for the um Extra Life for Kids. Oh, yeah. Extra Life Marathon. So I popped in about three or four times Mm -hmm. to say check in on them, see how they were doing. I think it was like uh, 10 in the morning, 2 in the morning, and then 9 the next morning. (laughs) And I I popped in to see how everyone was doing. So it was, and they looked like they were having a lot of fun. So I just wanted to say they rock and they did a good job raising tons of cash for a very good cause which was children's miracle network indeed so there yep good stuff i remembered i remembered (laughs) (laughs) so alona if people want to get in contact with us for whatever reason they possibly could want to get in contact with us what are some of the many ways that they could do so they can email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. Our Twitter is at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 616-666-6778 or use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. Our YouTube channel is MMO Reporter Network. And remember to like our videos and subscribe to our playlist. Perhaps watch some other shows on the network if you Mm -hmm. feel like it like the steve show which is apparently now on our network i don't know what that is i have no idea but it's something (laughs) facebook is gw reporter tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com or you can visit either celeste or myself on twitter and i am at one big pair and i am at selyuki or you can find me in game as selyuki.5046 and I am at one big pair dot one two four nine. And 
I love it when I get whispers. I love it. I was about to say, we actually had some really interesting people decide to message us this week who were really awesome and had some really great conversations about the game and different strategies for surprisingly making money. Uh, So we really appreciate it. I think that was actually the same person who gave me the tip about the waypoints. Probably. Friday night? Yep. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Rawr. I just noticed you went rawr. Yes, because uh, Lemon Noodle uh, decided to say that all of the hosts on the network are dragons. Mini Mm. dragons. Mini dragons. Yes. So thank you, chat room, for coming out and spending your evening with us. We really do appreciate you guys and all of the banter that helps keep us awake while we do the show. Yay! And thank you, Alona, for being le awesome. Thank you for being not robot-y anymore, but it was awesome while it lasted. Well, I can only keep up my, my special disguise for certain amounts of time. Yeah. I can now I can now go back to calling you Splendiferous Celeste. Ooh, yay. Thank you for downloading the show. We hope that you download it again next week. We hope that you enjoyed the show. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game. And hopefully Alona will remember to say those words the next time she does a show. I wasn't listening. I'm typing. <laughs> <laughs> You're typing in comma hashtag. I come a hashtag, you guys. I come a hashtag. I just saw your tip of the week. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to, I don't know. I have to change that still. I'll think of (laughs) it. I I wrote in there, expletive, play the game? Question mark. (laughs) Not final. (laughs) It doesn't say not final, though. Oh, I took that off of there. (laughs) I had written non-final at the end, and I decided, I guess it was final at one point. (laughs) I don't know, man. <laughs> so, report from Lion's Arch. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> oh, I want that to be the actual intro. <laughs> no. Nope, nope. So you get this view of the heroes, and this is the one that we had seen in the, um... <sighs> speak words. <laughs> In the device showing the colored orbs and their uh, poop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Celeste said a bad word. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> uh, sincere apologies. If, if you're listening at work, I'm sorry. Didn't need to do that. All right. <laughs> at least. At least I was all professional about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, st- immediately start giggling. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I think, I think all Steves are good. Like Steve Rogers, he's a good guy. Yep, I don't yep. think bad guys. I don't think bad guys could be named Steve. So Steve, maybe Bubbles is a good dragon. But Steve. Steve. Yep. Steve right. McBubbles. Steve McBubbles. <laughs> <laughs>